let's see what we can do here. This pine board project is really becoming popular. I'm getting so many emails, and I thank you for it. I got one from uh, Tom Alissi, uh, a K1TA. He wants to, he's the president of the Greater Norwalk Amateur Radio Club in Norwalk, Connecticut. And he uh, wants to bring this as part of the, uh, the club project. That's really great. I want to do one other thing before we really get into this, because I got some interesting stuff. I've talked about it before, but electric radio, if you don't get this, get it. It's really great now. It's uh, a lot about restoration and so on, but you'll learn a lot. But this month is a whole thing on the uh, Mosley receiver. Let me get it up here. The Mosley receiver, you know, we, uh, we talk about it. We've had uh, several things with uh, interviews with John Clemens, but this tells the whole story and uh, you'll, you'll enjoy reading it about the Mosley receiver. And all you got to do is put ermag.com. Send them a note. Get involved with that. It's really fun. Well, we have some things to talk about. And um, what I'm going to do uh, here in the plant, I don't know what happened to the other camera. It didn't work, but uh, this one will. I'm going to make you a little seasick here for a minute. We're going to take you on a little ride. Get down here so you can see what we're doing. I have the power supply that we built. And... Uh, one of the things that I did purposely, I left out a part. And I left it out purposely. I didn't say anything about it. It wasn't a contest. It was just to see how many guys were paying attention. <laughs> and there were some of you, and thank you. You get the award. What was that part? This. A fuse. And uh, in, the, in the whole design of the thing, if you remember, we had, I've got to watch it because this is plugged in. We have 110 volts and 110 volts. But then here is the switch to turn it on. And this spare terminal is to wire in the fuse. My idea is to use a fuse that's, uh, that has leads on it. But there's all kinds of ways to do the fuse. Uh, you can do it in line or what have you. But throughout, during this whole project, everybody, use your own discretion, your own idea. Make things happen. See, that's, that's the fun of homebrewing. We don't have to stick to the plan. Because... <laughs> There really isn't a plan. Uh, it, it, yeah, we show you what to do in the schematics, but get in there. Do it. And I also have to tell you, I was so thrilled to get some comments on the wonderful... I should... You know, Ham Nation, we should uh, patent this. And <laughs> the chip stick. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's something extra. What is that? Well, that came from KA7... TPH, and it's a great idea because he was saying that he used these in his work years ago, and um, it's really tough on the capacitors just to short them out. You saw how that worked last week. We're going to do it here in a minute again. But if you put, and it isn't any big deal. Uh, this is a, I had a 220 ohm resistor. That works fine, but I put a lead on it. So what we're going to do here, turn that little booger on. Gosh, you didn't get to see the light. <laughs> it's purple, by the way. <laughs> but watch what's happening here with the meter. She's uh, coming right on over to 200 volts. Now, we're going to turn it off. What's going to happen? Wait a minute. I'll even unplug it. It's unplugged from the wall. Wait a minute. What's happening here? What's happening is these capacitors have stored that charge up. I tell you, 
before. I told you many times, and I will repeat it each time. I got a couple of nasty notes from guys. Oh, my God, you're going to kill somebody. No, 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 no. That's the warning. That's the warning. Come on. We're growing up guys and girls, and we're building things, and you're playing with some voltage. What are we going to do with that? Chip came up with a great idea. We're going to couple this to the ground lug over here, and I'm going to go over here and touch the capacitor. Watch what happens to the meter. It slowly goes down. That's because the resistor, and, and it's not hard on the capacitors at all. Turn it back on, and um, I have the meter on the output of it, and here she comes. It's charging the capacitors. That's why it does just come right on, because it's charging those caps. I'm going to turn it back off. It didn't go down, but it will when I touch the other end, the positive end of the capacitor. Down it goes. You be sure with any kind of I even do this to my 12 volt supplies. Don't let the capacitors hold the charge. Take them down. I always use the uh, just a uh, a clip and a couple of resistors. But uh, Chip came up with this great idea. Thank you, Chip. K9 MIT. He's on. He, thank him. He's on the on the chat room in there all the time. And uh, what a great idea he had. But now we have a a little addition. <laughs> So there you go. There's nothing but a piece of wire, a resistor onto the clip lead. So again, it's just a safety part of things. Because I'm going to do something else for you. You see, all capacitors have the charge situation. That's what they're there for. But now I'm going to do something rather interesting for you. I have a 9-volt battery, and I have a, an electrolytic. And we're going to match up the minus to the minus, and we're going to put that little baby right across that 9 volts. Get in there. Okay? Going to switch the meter back down to 10 volts, and we're going to put that booger on there, and watch what happens. Okay, there's 9 volts. So it's not now, here comes the cap. There's the minus. Wait a minute. The battery's here. Where's that coming from? Told you. We've charged it, and you can't just go away and leave these things. So we're going to take our old chip stick, and we're going to make it go away. But you see, it'll go away a lot faster because we only had 9 volts. There again, you have to maintain safety, and that's what we're trying to do here. And the other thing that we're working on, and uh, in the coming weeks, we'll have all the, the other parts and stuff, but we've got, and a lot of you mentioned it, and I appreciate any comment, good or bad, I want, I want to hear it because we're all learning, of course. We're going to come out of that power supply at, uh, you know, where we, where we uh, took the, uh, the chip stick and died. And we're going to build us a bleeder setup. These are resistors. And because of that, we can have different voltages. This, of course, is ground. And we'll be getting into the the size of, of resistors and so on. One of the reasons I don't know yet is I have to get all of the other parts together. That's why, if you remember, there's, there are extra uh, terminals on the screw strip on the output. That's where we'll mount the bleeder resistors. And these guys will allow us to bleed that down. We won't have to worry too much about the, uh, the old chipstick because that'll that'll be bleeding that uh, plus voltage down but we need to have different voltages we'll be able to do that and that's how you do it 
All your transmitters and receivers, they have power supplies just like this. They'll come out of the rectifiers, bingo, away you go. And uh, the other thing that we're going to work on is I'm going to work on, on the uh, filter because it um, depends on how it all comes out. We're going to work on that, on that B plus a little bit. You see, what we have now coming out of that, just the capacitors, the rectifier and the capacitors, what we have there is a situation that uh, it's 200 and some volts, true. But guess what? It looks like this. Well, we don't want that. We want to filter that better. You can just count 60 cycles, 120 cycles, whatever. How do we do that? We do that with filter networks, a big choke or more caps, and we'll figure that all. But what we're going to do is we're going to cut the tops off of those babies so that we don't have that ripple effect. That's what we do with power supplies. We have filter networks and all kinds of other things that make sure the voltage is not going to hum and buzz and crackle. And we'll get into more of that as we go. I'm working on the mic preamp now, and uh, I'll keep bringing you some of these great, uh, great things that we're doing. And, and I want you all to follow along. But no matter what happens all through this project and any project you do, you want to make sure that safety first. That's so important. And um, I also, I have the camera over here. Uh, I've had a lot of guys ask me again, showed it last week, but here it is again, where the parts came from and what we need to do for the power supply. There you are. The, this is the basic power supply. There will be other, <clears throat> other resistors and stuff. But this will get you going. Notice here, one fuse holder. Everybody missed that last week. <laughs> I did it just, just, for, just because I could. <laughs> and um, the vacuum tubes we're going to need, 6X5s, 12AU7. And um, those come from a, a really great company called vacuumtubes.com. They, they really have great tubes at, at a really good price. Antique Electronics is going to be your main supplier. They have everything. You go to that site, I guarantee you, you will spend some, sometimes hours. Man, they have everything. So for all you guys that say, oh, you can't do that high because you can't get the parts. Oh, yes, you can. And they really have a great catalog of, of antique electronics. Well, to us, it's Antique for some, but not for us. It's everyday stuff. And then I like, remember, the ceramic tube. That tube socket's great. I love that tube socket. So do you, don't you, George? <laughs> that is a must. And uh, those come from esrcvacuumtubes.com. I guess you could get your vacuum tubes there, too. He has a lot of things also. So there's a great list of parts and the suppliers, so no excuse. And uh, there's the diagram again. We'll continue to go through some of it. One thing I'm going to point here in the last, when you're looking at antique electronics, if you really want to get into it, they have a kit. It's a it's a power supply kit. And I would advise everybody that wants to get in the building a little more, it's fine to build what we're doing here, but this son of a gun has voltages from, I think it's 150 volts all the way down to, uh, uh, I think, 3 volts. All the different taps, it's kind of hard to see on this little thing here, but these are all outputs for different voltages. There's, uh, I think, three regulators in it. Uh, the, uh, they're using solid state uh, rectifiers. Check it out, K101A. Everybody needs a bench supply, and this baby is it. 
I, uh, I really, really think you should take a look at that. And uh, they have a, almost like the old Heath kit. Check this out, George. Is this cool? And guess what? It's built on pine board. <laughs> you get a <laughs> board. Uh, do you know about this, George? No, I, I don't. I have not seen this before. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just really fabulous. And uh, there again, antique electronics. There's a diagram for it. Give you a little better insight. And I think it's like 40 bucks. Oh, you, oh really? You, yeah, forty five. I think I'm right on that. It isn't very much money. My gosh, the transformer costs more than that in most cases. But uh, I, I love it. There's all the voltages. Uh, did I get that on the camera right? 22, 45, 67, 90, and 135. And then there's wow. also 1.2 to 6 volts. So uh, what a great thing. So uh, there you go. Antique Electronics, man. They're your people. I mean, they've got some wonderful things going on make you seasick here again but um I, I i i i'm just you know i'm a builder i love building this what i'm standing in, in here is because of what i did when i was 15 years old i got into building and so many of us did and i i just invite you to get get going with this and uh, We'll come back after a while. If we have time, I'll show you some of the other stuff. We're not here for that tonight, but uh, I get a lot of requests, so while we're hooked up, we'll go.